Happy New Year's everyone! We have another tutorial for you today about the new function or the new element inside the Toolit Kit Helpful Functions plugin for Bubble.io. So stay tuned while we take a look at that and how you can use it and how it can help you build a better app. So before we dig in <coughs> and check out the new element and how you can use it and integrate it within your app, I just want to make a few remarks here. Um, this plugin was built out of necessity and um, I was faced uh, with a situation where I needed to format an input and none of the plugins that are currently in the store that use the same library support anything complex in that library. So that is one problem that I faced and um, that's why I built the plugin. Another problem is all of the plugins that I tried that use the same library or any other similar library don't actually um, render the input properly. And, and what I mean by this is the way that Bubble works is a little bit different than the rest of the HTML um, uh, static pages out there. So most plugin writers, what they assume is the input will be available whenever the plugin is rendered on the page, but that is not the case. So what I had to do is um, I had to attach a mutation observer in there and uh, kind of have the plugin watch for the element when it becomes available. This makes it much more robust in reusable elements or when dealing with um, inputs that are hidden and become available later down the line uh, with interactions and so on. So this is a plugin. Go ahead and install it. It has a couple of elements in there which you will find very useful. Um, a couple of um, server-side actions and yeah, without further ado, let's um, check out the plugin and how you can use it. So here we go. I fired up my plugin development app and let's go ahead and install the plugin together. So head over to the plugins tab, click add plugins, give it a second to load and in the search type toolit. And this is what you're going to see. So I'm going to install this. This is a public uh, version. This one is for development. So I'm going to install the public. And here we go. And you can see inside the plugin, you got uh, four elements. This one is under testing. And when that is done, trust me, guys, it'll, it'll just change everything when, it, when, when, uh, when you use icons. But anyways, we'll be talking about the input formatter now. So I got an empty page. I'm going to do is I'm going to put an input here and I'm going to give it an ID. And if you guys don't know where to find or expose this ID attribute, um, you can expose it here under Settings, General, expose the option to add an ID attribute to the HTML. So make sure this one is checked and come back to your design view and you can see an ID attribute uh, field. Now this ID, ID attribute can be anything you want. Right now I called it one, you can call it, uh, I don't know, hello, um, me, anything you want, as long as it's unique. So um, uh, this is the input, and I'm going to head over here to the left and add my input formatter here. Yes, it doesn't have a preview yet. I'm working on it, and I'll get to it soon. So usage is very simple. What you do is, is here in the element ID, you just add the ID of the input that you just um, gave it. So in this case, I gave it the, the ID attribute of one. So I'm gonna come over here and head to one. Um, before I continue, a slight remark or um, for any newbies watching this, the way these plugins work, um, specifically plugins that kind of manipulate the DOM or the input, is they act as a middleman between um, your input your dome, the rendered document, and the bubble workflows. So l let me explain this, and this will only take a second. So let's say, for example, you got your input here. Um, let's see here, database. So this is the input, the dynamic data that's coming in, or the static data for that matter. It doesn't really matter. And let's say, for example, the output is all the way over here. Now, the way that this works, and let me get this uh, my, my pen here out. The way that this works is um, data will be given to um, the plugin. The plugin will talk to the input. And when you save data, you're actually saving the outputs of the plugin. So you're not saving the outputs 
of this. No, you're not doing that. You, what you're doing is you're saving the output of the plugin, right? Because the plugin is the one that formats the input for you in this case, and you can kind of capture all the results from down there. So that's the way that this works. All right, okay. So let's continue here. So as we said, uh, the input, uh, the plugin here is a middleman. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my initial value here. So in this case, I have the option set as a date with a pattern of year, month, day. So I'm gonna give it 2020, 2020, and I can actually just keep going 01, 01, and it will know. I can also do 2020 slash slash, but this should work too. And whenever I render the page now, it will take my input that I placed here, my initial value, and kind of pop it inside that text, inside that input to field. There you go. So this is, this is the input field now. And whatever you do then afterwards, let's say you put in another date, then it will automatically format that for you. And because, because the input is, is constrained by these rules or these options here, even if I try to add or type in any letters, it won't allow me. So that is, that is exactly what we want, right? So yeah, so that is the way it works um, in a nutshell. Now, to get inputs or to get outputs out of this, you have a couple of options. So let me just drag in here a text field and uh, I'm gonna reference the uh, plugin, which is the input formatter. And you can see you have a number of outputs that are available to you. So you have the result as formatted. So let's have that in here. And I'm gonna copy this because I'm, I'm lazy, right? So I'm gonna go here to next field and put a new one. And the result as a number, if it evaluates to a number, the plugin will make that available for you. Um, also, you have it as a date. So if the result evaluates to a date, you'll get a date. And here, as a credit card type, so if the options allow, if you have options that have credit card input, then it will, uh, it will shoot out a credit card type if it's available. And last is the raw value. And the raw value here means the unformatted value. Now, depending on your use case, sometimes you want to save the raw value and sometimes you don't. It really, really depends. But the whole idea behind building this plugin is I don't want to be converting strings back to numbers and numbers into somehow show them uh, or show them as strings and all of that, right? So I handled all that in the code for you to, to kind of give you, if it's a number, I'll give you the number. If it's a date, I'll give you the date. And the code is smart enough to evaluate um, all of that criteria for you. So um, let's give this another try. Right now we have it set as a date. Let's see if it really evaluates to a date and, and, it, and it shoots out a value for you for that. So let's refresh the page. All right, so the page is loaded now and you can see these are the results that we're getting out of the input formatter. Now let's examine these and let's just take a, just a quick second and take a look at this because this is really important, right? So, um, yes, I have 2020, and for anybody noticing this, it is December uh, 31, 2019 at 7 p.m., and that is due to the time zone conversion that Bubble currently has, right? So it, it took this input as UTC, and it, and it shot it out for you um, back again as um, uh, the time zone that you are in, right? So 12 a.m. 2020 is basically in my time zone, still December 31st, 2019, 7 p.m. So that's fine, that's expected behavior, right? It's a bad example, but it's expected behavior. In the first output, we have it as formatted. So whatever you, what you see is what you get, right? In the second output, which is the number, it evaluated this whole string into the best possible number it could give you. So in this case, it's 2020. In the third, it's a date. And that's what we have, the date, where we talked about that. We're not going to talk about that again. And the third, credit card type. In this case, this is not a credit card, so you don't get a credit card type. And at the end, you have the raw unformatted value, exactly as it's typed without the uh, rules or the options that we set here. So that is the way that it basically works. Um, 
In the next example, we're going to take a look at manipulating these options to kind of, to kind of give you other use cases, right? So, so the best place to, to kind of examine and take a look at what options you can use with this is to head over to cleave.js because this element is based off of cleave. And on the demo page here, you kind of have different configurations that you can use and you can copy and paste and modify to your liking, right? So um, we'll come back to the credit card in just a bit, but let's just take, for example, um, time formatting. And this is something that everybody is having trouble with nowadays. How do I format time? Well, it's, it's fairly easy and it's fairly simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna copy the JSON or the configuration in here. So all you want to do is, is basically you need the data or the configuration that's between these two curly brackets. So copy it and copy the curly brackets with it. Head back to your editor, come back here to options and paste it. Now, you're not done yet, right? Um, and, and this is kind of a limitation that we're faced with with Bubble is you can't just copy and paste this. You need to, you need to actually format this properly as a JSON for it to evaluate properly. And what that means is you need to use double quotes for your keys here and your values here, right? So we're treating everything here as a string except for the arrays, right? Um, actually, no, sorry. You need to actually wrap the arrays. Hmm, I don't remember. Hold on. I did this plugin a while back. Let me double check. No, you don't need to wrap the arrays. Um, that should be it, basically. All I did is add a double quote around the key values and uh, anything else that looks like a string, right? So these, these square brackets refer to an array or a list, so I don't need to touch those. Oh, there's one more thing I need to do is this single quote is not actually supported, so you need to replace all your single quotes with double quotes here. So almost there. All right, now that should do it. Um, before we continue, we need to, to examine our initial value, right? Because it will try to format this into a time pattern and it will definitely fail because this is not a time pattern. So um, let's see, let's say it's 3 p.m., so 15 and uh, uh, 15.30 and 20 seconds. So 15.30, 20, right? And let's load that up. All right, there we go. So it's 15, 30, and 20 seconds. So 15 hours, 30 minutes, 20 seconds. And the, again, the formatted value is 15, 30. It evaluated as a number as 15, and it gave you out 15, 30, 20. Now, yes, it will not shoot out for you a date time object because this is not really a date time object. This is just a string that's formatted to look like time. And if we come here and you say, for example, 20, um, I don't know, 10 minutes and zero seconds, then that's what you get. And you can also do um, 0, 3 for 3 a.m., right? Uh, there's other time, there's other, pa other patterns in Cleave for p.m. and a.m., and you will have to examine those. So let's take a look at another example also. So give me a second, let me pull out another one. All right, <clears throat> so I'm back to cleave.js, and I'm gonna pull up a credit card example. Now, due to the way that this plugin works, um, it will accept credit cards and it will tell you what credit card type it is, but you don't need this function to be available because it is natively built into the plugin. So you don't need to make this configuration or write your, a custom code in there or anything like that. All you basically need is you need this line over here. So credit card true, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy this JSON over here or this object. And I'm going to head over to uh, the plugin preview and I'm going to replace this whole thing with what I copied. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these two lines over here. I don't need those. The next thing I do is I know that this is a single key inside an object, so I don't need a comma. That will cause an error for sure. So I'm getting rid of that comma. Um, the next thing um, is I need to wrap these in double quotes. And I'm going to get rid of this initial value because I don't really need it right now, right? Uh, I, I don't know a credit card value 
or number off by heart. So I'm going to um, hit preview here. <coughs> All right, so here is the page loaded. And if I start typing in a credit card value, you can see that it actually gives me a formatted number. Now let's go back here, hold on. It starts with three, four American Express. Let's give that a try. So three, four, that's Amex, that's American Express, perfect. Um, diners Club, so it starts with 300, Diners. So that is basically the way you use this as a credit card. Now let's pick on another example here. Um, and one disclosure before I continue, the f um, I never got around to actually tying in the countries here. So the phone works, but I'm pretty sure this phone region code will not work because those are additional libraries and um, they're too heavy to uh, and too complicated to attach and bubble at the current time. But let's go down here to the custom blocks. So let's say I want to uh, do something like this, right? So I want to separate this by dot. Same exact process. I just copy this whole thing, head over here, replace this, and wrap this in a double quote. Get rid of those single quotes because they won't work. The correct syntax is double, although JavaScript does accept single, but in this case it doesn't. All right, so here we go. And that should work. Now I should have blocks delimited and should be transferred or transformed, sorry, into uppercase. So let's give that a quick try. All right, so we're back. And there we go. <coughs> so how would you go about saving these values? Well, very simple. Let's add a button. It's called a save. Start the workflow. Let's say create a new thing. I don't know where I'm going to create this. Let's create a test. And here under test, I can just pick up the input formatters, formatted result, the number, the date, the credit card type, anything I want. So that is basically it. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something and see you soon.